Bum. Hello, I'm your host Mystical Blue and welcome to another exciting episode from Marvelous Videos where today I'll be taking you through Quintesson Origin Explored Transformers. The Transformers series is primarily based on the fight for existence between two Cybertronian races, the Autobots and the Decepticons. However, there were other races too, like for example, Unicron. Although Unicron is shown to be transforming with mechanical transitions into his planet and bot mode, he was not a Cybertronian. Similarly, there were the Quintessons. The name might sound similar to all Transformer fans, as a character named Quintessa was introduced in the fifth instalment of Michael Bay's Transformer series, Transformers The Last Knight. In the movie, Quintessa was showcased as a sentient being and stated as the creator of the Transformers, but there is a whole new level of understanding regarding Quintessons. The Quintessons had different explanations throughout different media, primarily as a bizarre alien race. With Shark Tikons and Alicons as their minions, they inflicted their wrath on anyone who they came across. So, without further delay, let us dive into our video where we will explore the Quintessons. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Welcome to my laboratory. Who are Quintessons? The Quintessons were created by writer Ron Friedman and first appeared in the 1986 animated film, The Transformers, The Movie. Ron wanted to include a hostile force with a different look. So the Quintessons were introduced as an alien race residing in the ocean world, Quintessa. The Quintessons were known to conduct their kangaroo court and anyone who unfortunately arrived on their planet was prosecuted. Whether innocent or guilty, their prisoners were thrown into a pool of deadly shark ticons who devoured them. In the animated film, after the death of Optimus Prime, the matrix of leadership was passed onto Ultra Magnus. Elsewhere, wounded Decepticons, including Thundercracker, Skywarp, Sharpnel, Kickback, Bombshell and Megatron were scrapped in space under Starscream's command in order to conserve fuel. As the wounded Decepticons kept drifting into space, they were found by Unicron, who made a deal with Megatron to obtain the Matrix of Leadership from the Autobots in exchange for a new body and life. Unicron transformed Megatron into Galvatron and converted the parts of the other deceased Decepticons into Cyclonus, Armada, Scourge and the Sweeps who would serve as Galvatron's minions. Following this, Unicron attacked Cybertron with Galvatron, seeking ways to obtain the Matrix of Leadership from Ultra Magnus. While the Autobots tried escaping in their pods, Galvatron attacked the pods. The explosion caused the Autobots to crash on different planets, among which one was Quintessa. Hot Rod and Cup crashed at Quintessa and were immediately taken hostage by its inhabitants, the Quintessons. They conducted their prosecution and were about to drop the two into the waters full of Shartikons before the Dinobots saved them with the aid of whom they managed to escape from the planet. Later on, September 15th, 1986, writer Flint Dial reintroduced the Quintessons in season three of the Transformers animated series. The Quintessons then were shown to be an ancient race whose dark history was intertwined with the Transformers, Primus and Unicron. The Quintessons were powerless yet highly intelligent and shrewd beings. Throughout the galaxy, they are known to be traders and businessmen, but their dealing mostly involved betrayals. They had an entire army of Shartikons and Alicons, which were extremely brutal forces. A long time ago, they resided in the planet-sized factory known as Cybertron. They invested their resources in making trans-organic beings and later built two types of sentient robots. The Autobots, which were designed for domestic duties and labor, and the Decepticons, which were designed for military purposes. The Quintessons failed to notice that the robots had started developing their own mind and treated them terribly. Autobot A3 started a protest, which soon became a widespread rebellion. The Quintesson had to leave Cybertron and settled on a distant planet, Quintessa, with an undying grudge for all Transformers. The Quintessons, as showcased in the series, were of a different, unique types. They were the Quintesson judges, who were the leaders of the race. They were the ones taking decisions in their courtroom trials. They had five rotating faces, each representing a different aspect of the Quintesson. The Quintesson bailiffs, the guardians of the courtroom. The Quintesson executioners, who were responsible for putting an end to the victims of the Quintesson courts. 
Once a prisoner was declared guilty or innocent, the executioners flipped a switch which dropped the prisoners into a Shartikan's pit. The Quintesson prosecutors were tasked with the prosecution of Quintus's courts and the Quintesson scientists engaged in the scientific advancement of their race. Other origins and versions of Quintessons in comic. Japanese cartoon continuity. Legends comic. According to the legend comics, as showcased in their bonus edition volume X, Grand Maximus, the Quintessons had arrived on planet Cybertron millions of years ago and discovered the Oracle along with the vessel that contained it. They encased the Oracle within Vector Sigma and used its powers to transform Cybertron into a metallic world. The planet served them as a factory for creating robot slaves until, one day, their creation revolted and overthrew them from the planet. After the Quintessons left, they relieved slaves, claimed the Oracle's vessels and dumped out all the malicious energy residing in it for years. The dark evil energy later became Devil Zed. The Quintessons then used a portal to another dimension known as the Legends World, which they invaded with an army of overcharges. They were later defeated by Blitzwing, after which they considered the world dangerous and locked away from its creators, the Zarmoran with a quadrant lock. Unbeknownst to them, the portal had warped both time and space, and all this happened in the distant future. The Legends world would later be created only after Zamagen was released. BT World As showcased in the Outlier comic, the Quintessons monitored Project Binaltech on Earth with great terror. Once they noticed the Autobots helping enhance humans, they initiated a quadrant lock on the world. Owing to this planet remained frozen in time until the Altony was born, who broke the lock in the next 900,000 years. During this period, Quintessons befell to a tragic fate. Fight! Super Robot Lifeform Transformers 2010 Story Pages The Quintessons were introduced in part two of the series, where they had teamed up with the Decepticons and developed new warriors for them known as Predacons. These new warriors, along with the Shartikans, were provided to the Decepticons to uplift their ranks. When the Quintessons obtained Optimus Prime's corpse, they copied the schematics, and along with the schematics sent by Megatron, they created the colossal cannon soldier Gilfer. Macro Cosmic Seekers Published on March 4th, 2007, Chapter 8 of the Macro Cosmic Seekers, titled A Treasure's True Worth. The Seeker during the period when the Transformers were enslaved noticed the rising rebellion. When he reported it to the Quintesson superiors, they made a joke out of him. He later left Cybertron before the revolt had overthrown the Quintessons. Controverse In the Controverse comics, the Quintessons were shown during the period when Primacron was taken into custody by the Galactic Council for unleashing Tornodron into the cosmos. The Galactic Council then appointed Quintessons judge, Adveroros, to conduct the trial on Primacron. Although Adveroros seemed to give a sensible ruling in the trial, the Quintessons, in secret, wanted to harvest Primacron's brain after he would be sent to an asylum planet named Daruka 3. However, the plan failed as Primacron, with the help of a high-tech whistle, took control over all nearby primitive robots. He managed to restrain Adveros by his own Shartikans and revealed that he had once created bacterial machines that were the ancestors of the Quintessons. Adverora loudly denounced the claim while the Autobots arrived to take protective custody of Primacron. KISS Players According to the KISS Players Picture Story Show, KISS Players Marissa Fairborn and Xiaoshou Li, along with Sparkbox Angela, Stardust and Zangistu, were travelling in the Space Fortress through time aboard Brave Maximus when before collapsing and crash landing on a strange alien world in the year 2011. The world belonged to the Quintessons, who took the crash-landed beings hostage with the intention of executing them. Finally, after being saved by Optimus Prime and Godbug, they fled back to the Brave Maximus and re-entered the Time Portal. Unfortunately, the Quintessons also got caught up and were left stranded in space and time. Generations Selects Special Comic Long back in the past, during the early days of the universe, the Quintessons had developed a cyber-forming ray and used it on a barren, rocky world placed at the centre of the galaxy. They used their device and enslaved the energy being that resided in the planet's core with a supercomputer. They used the supercomputer to create robotic slaves, known as the Transformers, with the intention of selling them. 
However, the robots developed a mind of their own and revolted against their masters, thereby overthrowing them. The Quintessons then created another robotic life form known as Terrabots, which further led to the creation of Terracons. The Terracons were the elite force of Terrabots, who sought Unicron's energy throughout the universe in hopes of recreating a new one capable of conquering the universe. The Story of Super Robot Life Forms, The Transformers Manga In the story of Super Robot's life forms, The Transformers Issue 4, the Quintessons had built the colossal robot Gilfa as Galvatron's subordinate, but in reality, it was the shell for the ghost of Starscream, with whom they had allied. During an ambush against Rodimus Prime, Gilfa turned against Galvatron. Gilfa had almost defeated Galvatron before Rodimus Prime helped Galvatron and defeated the enemy. Wings Universe. As shown in Generation 2, Redux, the Quintessons had created Skybite to lead a new generation of Shartikons. In 2010, they sent Skybite and several new generation Shartikons to Earth to help the Decepticon Syndicate. By 2984, Quintesson space had been taken over by the mutants. In search of the legendary Decepticon Starscream's everlasting spark, the temporarily dislocated pirates known as the Star Seekers journeyed close to former Quintesson space in that year. In the end, the Star Seekers could reach a planetoid hidden within a region of space surrounded by black holes. They came across a lone Quintesson, who claimed to have been abandoned and betrayed by Starscream on the planetoid at some point in the past in a chamber. In exchange for Quintesson providing all of his knowledge regarding Starscream's last known location, the Star Seekers granted him passage off the planetoid. It was later revealed that the stranded Quintesson was actually long dead and it was Starscream's immortal spark that had been manipulating the Quintesson's body. By forming a partnership with Flame War, a Decepticon star seeker, Starscream abandoned the Quintesson's body and possessed Captain Cannonball's body for himself, enabling Flame War to seize control of the star seekers for himself. Arx Vector Prime Written by Jim Sorensen, echoes and fragments showcased that the Quintessons on Quintessie were replaced by the Master Renegade and the Monster Gobots on Antars 3. It happened during the events of the Unicron War in an unstable Iacus well, created by the schemes of Sideways and Gong. Deviations. When Optimus Prime and the Autobots arrived, several Quintessons were in charge of Kranix's execution and had to quit their kangaroo court and run. Optimus detected a familiarity with the aliens and their planet, but could not pinpoint it. Big Looker Storybooks The story of Wheelie, the wild boy Quintesson, published in 1986 under Big Looker Storybooks, showcased the story of lone Autobot trapped in the hostile planet of Quintesson. An Autobot ship crash-landed on Quintesson, with Wheelie as the only survivor, after which the Quintessons captured and took him for trial. They intended to drop Wheelie in the Shartican pit, but Wheelie managed to evade them and escape into the forests of the planet. Later, when Hot Rod's ship crashed on the planet, the Quintesson planned a sneak attack on the Autobot, but Wheelie appeared and fought them. Even with the Shartikans, the Quintessons were no match for the Autobots and were defeated easily. Marvel, the Transformers Comics Marvel UK Future Timeline Marvel Comics in 1986 published a four-issue limited series named the Transformers Universe. There, the Quintessons were shown to be the unpleasant enforcers for Unicron, who engaged in hunting down and picking off beings who attempted to escape his wrath. In an alternate future, the Quintessons had taken Hot Rod, Cup, and many other Autobots hostage and planned to torture them in the Shartikans' pits before the Autobots escaped and the Shartikans turned against them. In 2008, scientists on Quintesson discovered that a time fissure created by time travellers Galvatron, Cyclonus, and Scourge threatened to destroy their planet. They explored several different planets to shift their entire civilization, but the journey containing all details about the planets was lost on the planet named Junkion. While attempting to retrieve the journal, they found Rekgar, an Autobot allied Junkion, and sent him for being interrogated by the galaxy's greatest torturer. In an elaborate story, Rekgar confessed that the journal was lost in the void of space, to which the Quintessons inferred that the entire narrative was fabricated and executed the torture for his failure in bringing out the true location of the journal. The Quintessons then launched a surprise attack on Autobot City, taking it for themselves out of the desperation to keep their race alive. Except for Rodimus Prime, who was outside the city during the attack, and Rewind, Ramhorn, and Steeljaw, who were concealed inside Blaster's cassette compartment.
compartment, the majority of the Autobots had been rendered inactive. They used RC as bait and managed to acquire the creation matrix from Rodimus, who then reverted back to Hot Rod. Upon seeing their hopes to survive fading, Hot Rod activated Metroplex, who drove the Quintessons away, but at the cost of a lot of destruction in the city. Lord Kledgy gave the Quintessons orders not to return to Quintesson, but instead to roam the cosmos in order to reassemble their armies and exact revenge on the Transformers because their home planet was hopelessly doomed. It's unclear how that went for them, but given that they had already managed to chase off the majority of no metallic species, it presumably didn't go well. Let's give him a chance. Tell us about your gift. Go on! Alpha Quintesson in Transformers Energon 2004 Biggest and most mainstream story In the long list of planets that Unicron had devoured, there was a small spherical planet known as Planet Q. Although the troops of the world bravely fought back, it soon became clear that they would not be able to defeat Unicron. The Grand Chamberlain of the planet decided to commit suicide after accepting the fate of his world. When the planet's king could not carry out Chamberlain's order to detonate World Q's core, the Chamberlain himself carried out the deed, obliterating the planet as Unicron gobbled it. The explosion didn't destroy Unicron, but he was severely hurt, which sent him into a dormant state within the husk of which the spark of Planet Q's ruler existed. Over the coming years, driven insane by the isolation, the ruler of Planet Q's mind shattered apart, splintering into several personalities. The bones of Unicron's devoured subjects were used to carve out a new, armoured form with four rotating face masks, though which each each of his personalities could express themselves. His fifth personality, his original, true face, was hidden inside Unicron and only spoke when the armor was closed, hiding his face from view. It called itself Alpha Q. Alpha Q had found that everything Unicron had consumed could be recreated using Energon. He mastered the systems of the sleeping Unicron throughout the years that followed. He utilized what little energy he had and built the Terracons to represent the Planet Q forces. When Alpha Q had finished creating his agents, he dispatched them to Earth to collect Energon for his scheme, which called for the total recreation and restoration of Planet Q and all the worlds Unicron had formerly devoured. In order to command the otherwise mindless Terracons in battle, Alpha Q made Scorponok the Grand Chamberlain of Planet Q. Scorponok also helped Alpha Q recruit Decepticons for their purpose. Despite Energon being brought by the Terracons, it was not sufficient as the Autobots kept opposing them. When Alpha Q discovered Megatron's remnants inside Unicron, he noticed that it still possessed enormous power. He fed some Energon through Unicron circuits to release a blade that had been created from Megatron's own spark. Alpha Q gave Scorponok this sword to use in combat and exterminate any Autobots that stood in his way. Unfortunately, Megatron resurrected himself by diverting away Energon from Unicron's system and opposed Alpha Q. He defeated Scorponok and also had control of the Terracons. With no chance of standing against Megatron, Alpha Q chose to escape from Following this, he made several other attempts to steal Energon, including resurrecting Starscream's ghost to do his bidding and attacking Jungle City with Terracons that would keep itself invisible. His attempts failed due to the obstructions placed by the Autobots or Decepticons. However, later, much to Alpha Q's delight, Primus, the Transformer deity, created a new sun for Alpha Q's planet. The new sun was ignited using Unicron's essence, returning light and heat to Alpha Q's world. Quintessons in Transformers War for Cybertron Trilogy and in Cyberverse Cartoon War for Cybertron Trilogy Cartoon The Quintessons who ruled the Quintesson Empire were long-time adversaries of the Cybertronian race since they formally sold off Cybertron's inhabitants as slaves. They were referred to as the Creator. The Quintessons were finally expelled from Cybertron by the Cybertronians after they rose up against them. Though the accuracy of this allegation is uncertain, Judge Decius, who called the Cybertronians his children, soon claimed responsibility for emancipating the Cybertronians. The Quintessons had been gone for Cybertron for so long at the time of the Great War that the younger Cybertronians thought little of them, save as legends. Regardless of whether Decius was a singularly fragmented person or a standard for Quintesson judges, each of his faces had a distinct personality and engaged in the discussion to gain consensus before reaching a choice. Although it is uncertain if the Quintessons were the adversary 
to be chased away by Alpha Trion by the current era, they were remembered enough for Optimus to be aware of them and for Megatron to erupt in wrath when likened to a judge. Around the time the Ark was launched, Judge Decius would pay mercenary faction members to bring the Ark's crew to him. There, he declared his wish to reconcile with his children, but his threats and argumentative expressions left little doubt about his intentions. By chopping off the other faces, Decius' face of wrath would achieve consensus and decide to slay the Autobots. Decius assumed leadership of the mercenary group by manipulating the body of Double Dealer, the mercenary faction's commander, and pursued the Ark and the Nemesis. Although the mercenary's ship blew up, it is uncertain if Decius was inside at the time of the explosion. Cyberverse Cartoon The Quintessons were a peculiar species of aliens, interdimensional creatures that use their multiverse drive to tour the cosmos and decide which worlds deserve to survive or die. To do this, the Quintessons created judges, hybrid creatures based on the natural life forms of that universe. If the universe was deemed guilty, the judge would supervise the universe's death by employing unspace to eradicate all matter. The scientists typically monitored the procedure and, throughout his travels, acquired a penchant for collecting various variants of sound wave from different countless doomed universes. While judges were hybrids of natural life forms, the scientist himself was some type of biological monster that acted through mechanical proxies. It is unclear when the Quintessons discovered this universe, hieroglyphs inside the Titan, Croaton suggested that aliens had invaded his colony and abducted his inhabitants long before the present day. In any case, the Quintessons had built an outpost in a distant portion of the galaxy before 2000. The Quintessons realised that Cybertronians existed in this dimension as Croton flew past the outpost in quest of his missing countrymen, bringing the unfortunate Starscream with him. Although the current judge intended to merely judge and dispose of their new prisoner, the ambitious seeker attempted to win over his captors by disclosing the presence of the ore spark on Cybertron. The Quintessons then made for Cybertron, seeing this as a source of power to drive the information of the new judge and rewarded Starscream with their highest honour, absorption into the next judge. The Quintessons who arrived shortly after Megatron's defeat rapidly captured the planet and trapped the city of Lacon in the tentacles of their command tower. The Cybertrons were handed into a virtual reality simulation meant to keep them happy and submissive while the scientists drained their sparks and tapped into the ore sparks energy to power the building of this new judge. Unfortunately, Hot Rod, whom the Quintessons had neglected throughout their conquest of the planet, disrupted their plans. He created an ad hoc Cybertronian rebellion that operated out of Macadam's undetectable to Quintesson sensors and endangered their rule of the planet. Although the Quintesson soldiers ultimately arrested Hot Rod, the Autobot commander refused to cooperate and was declared guilty. Soon after, the Resistance invaded the command tower and battled with the scientist himself, putting the unborn judge in danger and cutting their prisoner's link to the virtual reality loop. After being released from jail, Optimus Prime, Megatron and their separate troops revolted against the Quintessons, escalating the fight into a full war between the two factions. Despite their greatest attempts, the Cybertronians could not break the force field protecting the Quintesson headquarters, but Iacona's partial activation forced their Shartican troops to withdraw. The Quintessons finally had the upper hand, thanks to the judge's fury over Megatron's theft of their multiverse escape pod, which rendered all opposing warriors inoperable. However, the judge was ambushed and overrun by the rebel commanders, who crashed into the command tower, supposedly dying as it burst and crumbled. Despite the fact that the previous judge had been murdered, it had lasted long enough for the gestation of their new judge to be completed. The new Judge Starscream gathered practically all of his opponents just to pontificate over them as Optimus Prime and Megatron were being tracked down. Iaconus was soon awakened and fought with Judge Starscream against the enslaved Croaton. Even though Wheeljack murdered the scientist, Judge Starscream utilized Unspace to kill Iaconus. Despite defeating Iaconus, Judge Starscream quickly lost control of Croaton. As his opponents broke loose and banded together, he was quickly overpowered and seemed to be slain by the dual matrices of Optimus Prime and a resurrected Megatron. The Quintesson invasion was decisively defeated and the remaining Quintesson troops were dealt with 
by the Autobots and Decepticons. By the time the group separated, control of the planet, no sign of their occupation had remained. Quintesson's connection to Michael Bay Transformers movies. Loosely adapting the concept of Quintesson's Transformer, The Last Night introduced the character Quintessa and stated it to be the creator of all Cybertronian lifeforms. According to the story, Quintessa had a guard force of 12 knights known as the Knights of Lacan who betrayed her a millennia ago. They stole her staff of power and hid it on Earth. Since then, Quintessa in disguise created the Infernicons to assist her in resurrecting the destroyed Cybertron while it moved slowly towards Earth. She eventually lost towards the movie's end and Cybertron's recreation on Earth was inhibited. In the movie's post-credit, we get to see actor Gemma Chan representing a holographic human female form on Quintessa. Throughout the movie, Quintessa stated that Earth was the evil planet-sized robot Unicron. Finally, in the post credit scene, we see researchers investigating the horn-like appearance, which according to Quintessa was that of Unicron's. Without a follow-through of the movie, it is yet unclear what Michael Bay had thought about portraying the Quintesson race, but we can certainly trace out the inspirations. He kept the idea of the Quintessons being the creators of the Transformers intact, but did not show if the purpose of creation was the same as the animated version, showing Unicron's horns as exposures, hinted slightly of it being dormant, with yet another question, if Quintessa wanted to destroy or resurrect the vicious planet Devourer. The ending of the movie was extremely open-ended. Although the character, Quintessa, did not exist in the comics, it might have been Michael Bay's reimagination of Alpha Quintessa. With all that suspense left to be revealed, we hope for the bizarre alien race in the upcoming Transformer movies. Conclusion. The Quintessons were prominent characters in the Transformer comics and the animated shows. With hopes of introducing a new face of evil, writer Ron Friedman created the Quintessons. When the entire concept is based on alien races, why not bring in a new one? The Quintessons were not brutal fighters or warriors, but cunning creatures capable of setting up catastrophic impacts if given the required time. They were manipulative and tried winning wars by forming alliances. Michael Bay tried teasing the concept of Quintessons, but without a follow through, we are yet to know if they would be introduced at all. With that, we come to the end of our video. Hope you all liked it. And do let us know your views about Quintessons in the comment section below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. But just in time to be judged. Decepticons!